Hello and welcome, my name is Defining Disaster, this is Battlefield 1, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a closer look at shotguns, specifically what you need to pay attention to when using them to get the most out of them on the battlefield. And when it comes to this topic, this guide on how to use a shotgun most effectively, there is essentially two areas of information that we have to cover, that we have to look at. One centers around the weapon you're using, the other around how you're using that weapon, and as such I've divided today's video in those two parts. The first then, knowing your weapon, and to start this off, I thought it would be relatively handy if we went over the different shotgun variants available so that you understand when you're using one of those variants what you've actually picked up. It's important to understand what your ideal engagement distance is for a shotgun, what the strength and weakness of the shotgun is, and of course which variant to pick of any name of shotgun, be that the Model 10A, be that the M97 trench gun, or any other shotgun you like to use. And therefore we're going to be quickly covering the basic presets that are available, starting of course off with the all favorite, the Hunter variant, this as most of you will know comes with a tighter pellet spread. The factory variant is generally the default variant and comes usually with better recoil decrease. The slug variant is a different beast altogether really. It comes with only one pellet, however this pellet does much more damage giving you a reduced one shot kill range in close quarters but much better and consistent medium and long range performance. The backboard version generally comes with lower recoil and better recoil decrease but an earlier damage drop off meaning of course you're going to be doing less damage sooner with the backboard version of any shotgun compared to for example the hunter version of said shotgun. The sweeper variant of any shotgun comes with lower pellet damage, less vertical but more horizontal dispersion. Essentially it is a duck bill that has a little bit more in the pellet department but also does less damage when it comes to per pellet damage. I'm not quite sure why exactly you'd want one of these necessarily for taking on enemies in Battlefield 1. I guess it's good for taking on enemies which are standing next to each other. Other than that, if you can aim straight, take the Hunter variant. Last but not least, of course, there is one more variant available, only as far as I am aware, on the 12G automatic, and that is the extended variant, which comes with a larger magazine at the cost of higher dispersion when it comes to those pellets. So with that out of the way, another thing you need to understand about shotguns is generally they don't have a base spread with most of the variants. They do have a little bit of spread when it comes to hip fire. Instead, however, they've got a dispersion value for each individual pellet. That is to say, for the pellets in general, but each individual pellet is treated separately. This comes down to essentially cone of fire, which is why dispersion values increased or decreased are so important when we talk about these different variants of the shotguns. With the variants then explained, which shotgun is good for what? They are relatively different actually, despite us having four and multiple variants of almost each and every one of those shotguns. Generally, you need to distinguish between two categories of shotguns, whereas this is a little bit fluid, especially when we get towards the border of these categories. There is essentially a spam fire shotgun and there is a shotgun for single shots that will get you the kill. The M97 trench gun and the Model 10A of course are firmly in the category of one shot one kill shotguns. They come with lower fire rates, higher pellet counts and of course therefore have a more consistent one shot kill range and that range is usually a bit longer a bit further away than those of the other shotguns. There is then of course the DLC from They Shall Not Pass the Sjögen shotgun which is somewhat in between there. It has the potential to one shot kill your enemies and that actually quite reasonably but it can also be used very effectively in a sort of two tap spam fire mode where you always fire the shotgun twice before you even check if your target is dead because the shotgun has a relatively good fire rate as such it slowly moves towards the spam fire category of shotguns which is of course firmly in the hands of the 12g automatic which of course doesn't even have a one shot kill potential on a normal game mode when shooting somebody at full health in the chest you're always going to need at least two shots on target with the 12g if you want to take somebody out. That extends as far as it goes to knowing your weapon. You should know a little bit more about the weapon you're using, but for that really you have to look at individual weapon guides to fully understand all the details of your weapon. However, with this information you should already be able to make a relatively well-informed decision as to what shotgun you should be using and if you've already chosen your shotgun, how you should be using it. When we speak then of using your weapon, there's a number of things you have to pay attention to. The first is of course a methodical proactive playstyle, something I've often mentioned in connection with the five round SLRs available to the medic class. I'm talking of course about the Outloading 8.35 and of course the Zelbslada 1906. And why this comes up here once more is that because much like those self-loading rifles, those five round SLRs, the shotguns with the exception of 12G cannot be played in a reactionary fashion because you'll usually be dead by the time you can fire a second shot off if you miss your first, assuming of course that you're not using the 12G and of course once more the Shirogen 
somewhat blurs those boundaries. The other reason why this is so important is because of the ADAD spam. Now, if you think ADAD spam makes it difficult to use self-loading rifles because, of course, they fire at a much slower fire rate, you haven't used shotguns yet. They have an even lower fire rate, and as such, the automatical ADAD spam or the Hellregal ADAD spam is even more effective against them. Therefore, knowing when you're going to engage an enemy, knowing when they're going to round the corner, or you being the one rounding the corner, knowing that there could be an enemy there, is extremely important to getting consistent performance out of your shotgun. Yes, you can panic shotgun somebody. That is relatively easy to do, but it's reliant somewhat on luck and skill. Whereas if you can avoid that random element of having to react to seeing somebody suddenly in your face, you've got a better chance of consistently performing well with your shotgun. The next point then to mention here is map and game mode. The more limited the angles are at which targets can approach you, the better essentially it is. Shotguns are excellent at close quarter cover maps where there is nevertheless clear pathing, where there is limited access routes to a point where you know where somebody possibly could come from. And this applies both to cover centric close quarter maps such as Prise de Tahua with clear pathing, but also more corridor shooters like Oregon Forest or of course Fort DeVoe and certain instances also Amiens. So while the map is important, just as important or just as influential is the game mode because the more predictable the combat as already mentioned the better for the shotgun user and as such an objective focused linear game mode such as operations rush front lines in certain situations and certain conquest maps argon forest and the previously mentioned priest de Tahua being examples are ideal for a shotgun you're less likely to be flanked or you're the one doing the flanking and furthermore there's only so many routes somebody can come from you usually shouldn't be getting caught out in the open suddenly being surprised by an enemy you should know where your enemy is located when it comes to these game modes because it is so very predictable generally the next thing to consider is if you're going to ads or hip fire your shotgun on and how exactly you're doing that and once more there's differences here dependent on the situation generally shotguns are very good at hip fire but they're still better when aimed down sight that is just a fact of life you have a zero spread modifier on a shotgun when you're aiming down sight usually around 0 0.3 0 0.5 0 0.6 of a modifier when you're hip firing that doesn't really matter for close quarter performance but when you're trying to edge out every meter of your one shot kill distance then maybe aiming down sight and certain scenarios is better. Now when to aim down sight is essentially when you're not in extreme close quarters and having to react to situations. If you can predictably look at your target down range at 15 meters and you're using a model 10A, the extra time it's going to take you to aim down sight because of course it's an iron sight is not very much and the added accuracy in my opinion, the peace of mind that your one shot kill is much more likely to happen is definitely worth it. Also if you have the time because you flank the enemy they're not looking at you, definitely avoid even missing by the slightest if you have the time those extra 100 200 milliseconds to aim down sight very quickly or just quick scope you will be acting in a way that is beneficial to you yourself as player and will more likely guarantee you your kill hip fire has however got its place in close quarters the extra time to ads is not welcome furthermore shotguns are accurate enough that at this point it's just a matter of your aim and dealing with the likely adad spam and not a matter of the spread of your shotgun frankly that's generally the case but i also find it easier to place accurate shots when aiming down sight and iron sight, especially when looking down those 15 or 20 meters. And I said that quick scoping of a shotgun, as already used in previous Battlefield games such as Battlefield 4, is always an effective way to more likely guarantee your hit. One last tip when it comes to hip firing shotguns is, if you're going to go around a corner, you may as well do it in style. Slide around the corner, it not only gives you a slightly better hip fire accuracy, it also actually means that you're going to be a much harder target to hit, and not many people are likely going to expect it. Lastly then, when to engage. This is a quick topic, but it is nevertheless important when it comes to shotgun. Know who you're engaging, know when you're engaging them, at what distance you're engaging them, and whether they are aware of your situation, and how many teammates they have around you. I find myself often flanking people with shotguns, and at this point I need to often determine, am I going to take two or three shots with my Model 10A shotgun to kill them, or am I going to try and close the gap, risking that they discover that I'm behind them, and then only need one shot to kill them. This this will depend on the situation, but more importantly, also on the number of players that are around them. Because if you take two to three shots to kill somebody with a shotgun, which is definitely possible without them even being able to return fire, depending on the fire rate of the shotgun, of course, you're not going to want to have enemy teammates of that individual you've just killed being aware that there is a shotgun at a not quite so ideal engagement distance 
for the shotgun user with only half of his mag left there. In those scenarios, it's much better to sneak up on the group of targets and then cleanly finish them off with one hit kills. This is also a matter of experience and also a matter of being able to move through a map successfully, but with a bit of practice, it's definitely something that will come by itself. Now, I'd love to hear your opinion on shotguns on this guide. Any additional tips and advice you'd like to share or opinions on this video, feel free to leave them down below in the comments or hit me up with them on Twitter. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And with all that being said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 1 video.